at a major Hollywood studio. In a corner office of sub-basement D. The development executives toil in obscurity to reboot it. Welcome back to our personal corner offices for Rebooted Quarantine. Season two continues and things are getting better outside, right? They are. They have to be. <laughs> well, here in the personal corner offices, things are always as good as they can be. We are here to reboot great Hollywood IP for the modern era, whether you want us to or not. And today, I'm a little bit curious if anybody wants us to reboot this one. So we'll get into it. But first, <laughs> let's talk to the panel. We have from Hot Takes with Billy Business, a senior producer at Screen Junkies, Billy Business. Uh, I'll, I'll take the heat on this one. If this is uh, another Matrix, I'll, I'll roll up my <laughs> sleeves here and say I was the one that uh, asked for this one. <laughs> so today we are doing Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Billy. Yeah. Was this popular with you growing up? So I, it's funny. Uh, I was I was just about three or four years old when this came out. It actually was counter programming to Batman, Tim Burton's ah. Batman. And that's why it was so popular, because a lot of people couldn't get into that one. I was too young for uh, Batman at the time, but I loved Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I actually really liked Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. And I may have seen Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. Definitely didn't watch the TV show. Did you even uh, know there was a TV show? <laughs> I did know there was a TV show. I absolutely did. Uh, I watched the TV show. Honey, I shrunk our honey. We shrunk ourselves is another one that I think maybe I saw. Couldn't tell you a single thing about it. I think a kid had asthma. That's like the only thing I remember. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a wild. Oh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. First, though, let's meet the other two co-hosts. You know them both from the Nerd Goat podcast. The first guy here is going to be seen coming up really soon on fandom's own Superman versus the KKK, Mr. Ed Greer. Hey, guys. Yeah, it's about how I fought the KKK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I swooped on their ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this is one I got to say. I have my typical Ed Greer reticence, but for some reason, my spider sense isn't going off with the inanity of this product. I, it, it isn't. I, I don't know why it's not. And that's weirded me out more than anything. That, you know what I mean? Was was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids something that you watched growing up? Was this like big in your household? It, it definitely wasn't. But Billy, when Billy said uh, he didn't say we we're going to do it, I'm not trying to paint him as a dictator in some Star Trek episode. But um, when he <laughs> was doing said, it, guys, <laughs> <laughs> when, when the one horseman of the apocalypse, big Billy Bidneth, when Billy Bidneth said we're going to shrink these kids, I said, <laughs> oh, no, daddy. we can't shrink oh, these no, kids, daddy. daddy. <laughs> 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 the dead is Rick Moranis. He's retired. Oh, then we're uh, going to shrink ourselves, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah the, yeah you know cooked up a way for us to shrink our sales uh that is funny but like dude uh, honestly uh i did but anyway when billy was saying we should do it i was like i'm gonna watch it on disney plus i mm. must confess i did it because i was literally <laughs> able to see it all in my mind the uh, the resuscitation scene when mm. when homeboy you know french kisses that chick back away call it the cpr <laughs> the the freaking ant stampede the flying on the flight of the bumblebees and jazz you know what i'm saying i was like it all came back in my brain i was like dude where's all i i, I can't remember my social security number but i got all this <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um, well, we'll get into some of those iconic moments as well. But first, the last member of the panel, you know him from the Nerd Goat podcast, Ron Swallow. Hi, guys. So exciting. Ron, <laughs> are you a honey I shrunk head? Are you, uh, oh. are you big into this? <laughs> Bill, are you referring to my tiny head? Oh. <laughs> no, no, your voodoo practice. This isn't Beetlejuice, bro. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um... I mean, I enjoyed it when I was a kid. I would be, uh, I would be lying if I said I remembered any of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember watching it go and laughing hysterically uh, yeah. as a kid. So I know that there was joy while watching it. But I, I honestly cannot remember much of anything except for that I liked Rick Moranis a lot. So. And who didn't really? I mean, Rick Moranis made this franchise. He played 
kind of the same character in every movie he was ever in, but it was always yeah. like, it was so unique in movies that you just kind of got Rick Moranis to do Rick Moranis and really is a comedic genius. I mean, I think that's true of most comic geniuses in movies. Like they just do their thing and you show up for it. Yep. For me in particular, like, I, you know, this was huge in my house growing up. We wore out the VHS of this tape. <laughs> um, that said, like, I never clung onto it as like a fandom. I mean, I think it's just one of those fun adventure romps that doesn't really stick with you. So maybe that's something we can change. I don't know. So I guess, guys, um, the really quick version, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was a was a trilogy, it wasn't planned to be a trilogy, but it was so successful that they turned it into two more movies. So it was a trilogy of movies and a live action TV show about a mad scientist who in his attic invents a shrinking ray and that shrinking ray accidentally shrinks his family. And then in the sequel, he accidentally blows up his baby to be Godzilla sized. And it was sort of a, a knockoff. Yeah, the wording, the wording for the sequel title is very strange because you can't say like, honey, I enlarged the kid, but blew up the baby sounds like some Al Qaeda shit that maybe yeah. <laughs> you should focus group that title a little bit. Yeah, I mean, these movies were basically just a riff on classic 1950s science fiction. Things like Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, Fantastic Voyage. Also, don't, uh, don't forget, uh, I think it's called They. It's mm. like a, a movie yeah. back in the days about big giant ants. Yep. That, that definitely plays prominently in this. No, that was a uh, imported whole cloth. I mean, that was the thing. This movie, you know, in an era before we really started trying to mine classic cinema for new updated takes, that's what they were doing in this movie. And in the same way that, you know, Independence Day is sort of a remake of 1950s alien invasion movies. Yep. This movie was sort of a modernization remake of all these 1950s weird body horror movies. Um, so I guess maybe we'll start there. What do you think an audience is going to bring to this? Do you think there's a tone that an audience is going to expect that maybe we should adhere to or diverge from? And do you think audiences are going to be protective at all of the source material? What do we think they're bringing to it? Oh, can, can I jump in here? I would like to say this. We should determine whether it is much like the sequel that they're reboot, reboot Quill that they're doing right now. <laughs> They got they got Rick Moranis out of, out of retirement. Like, I guess they showed him Batman on TV and he woke up like the Joker or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like that scene from Dark Knight Returns. Like, Joker's catatonic, chilling out, living his life. He sees Batman. All of a sudden he's back, baby. I think that happened to Rick Moranis. I don't know. He was variety came across the screen in the sanitarium he lives in. And he was just like, I'm back. And he busts out of his shackles. So yeah, probably saw the kid from Stranger Things. Oh with yeah, the curly the, hair. The, and was like the one with no teeth. Yeah, that kid sucks. Anyway, <laughs> um, so so basically, um, are we going to do it like they're doing in real life? They got like Josh Gad playing his like son or one of his sons. They don't know how big Rick Moranis' thing is. Are we going to do it as a rebootquel and try to beat that, or are we going to do this as like a we're just going to take the technology of this property? and apply it to another story. I think we should determine that. I would vote to pull it out of the Zelensky universe. Like I would take the concept of, you know, look at its core, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is really just about <laughs> its kids not feeling seen and not feeling heard to the most literal sense of that. Just, mm -hmm. I would take the theme and that's why like tone wise, I would also say like, keep this for kids because I think there's nothing wrong at all about, I think you nailed it when you said like, they didn't just get homage these things. They stole these things, not stole, but they took these things that were great and they put them in this container as like a starter kit for kids. So yeah. I, I think there's nothing wrong with building movies that are starter kits for kids. I think you do a starter kit for kids about kids, not feeling seen, not feeling heard, but just wrap it in a modern package away from the baggage of the TV shows and the movies and all that. I think that's smart. I mean, I think that, yeah, you know, they're doing the reboot that they're working on seems to be, you know, no disrespect to anybody, but sort of the bargain basement version of a reboot where it's like, let's just bring back all the same actors, set it 30 years later and tell the exact same story. Right. I would say let's let's set ourselves apart from that. And you know what? Maybe there's some gold to be mined in doing that. But let's give ourselves the challenge of like, no, we're rebuilding this thing from the ground up. Yeah, I told I totally agree, which is why I broached the subject. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was thinking, too. Um, and I think that there's a lot of cool 
I don't know. I have a couple ideas. I'm not going to be attached to them or anything like that. Um, but I think what what they're bringing into this is to to have a, a silly. I think there's. I think that it's a family thing, but I think it's also a silly good time because the concept. Yeah, sure, it is about kids not being heard and family dynamics and that sort of thing. But it's also just a silly fun romp. And if we make this. If we if we forget that part, I'm not saying it can only be that, but I'm saying if we forget that part, this movie will be uh, terrible. So. I agreed. I don't think this is one of those properties that's like, let's do the Cronenberg version of this. I think that's <laughs> the wrong approach. I definitely think like this is this franchise like is known for being for kids. And I think like you can put new twists on it, but it should always be for kids. That's my opinion. Here's my only pushback. I have visceral memories of this movie being the height of scary and tragedy. And like as a six year old watching this movie, I mean, it feels visceral. It feels like when those when that scorpion attacks, I was never more scared in a movie. Now, granted, my, you know, everything I had seen, it was very it was a small uh, sampling of other movies. But like, (laughs) sure. Yeah, I'm just saying on a on a sliding scale, I'm going more towards Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thrills than I am like the fly. You know what I mean? (laughs) Hundred percent. I I guess I'm just saying I think we need to keep in mind that like let's not make this a marshmallow movie. You know what I mean? No, no. Look, kids, kids kids want to be scared. They want to be scared on their own terms, and Mm -hmm. they definitely want to walk right up to that line of like too much, too much. But I think we can push it to that line, like you said, the scorpion fight that scared the crap or the the lawnmower part where i was like oh, yeah. oh my god you know like oh. mm-hmm. for a kid that's intense but for us i think we have to almost get in the mindset of like a six or seven year old like what scared us then you know i think that's a great place to start to think about it i mean honestly i remember even uh when they were in the bowl of cheerios and it was like <laughs> yeah. are they gonna drown is their dad gonna eat them I, again like as a six-year-old that is horrifying and so i think that it's <laughs> I, that's all i would say is like I think there's been a tone in kids movies that's been lost as they've moved into, you know, I don't know why, but it's just coming to mind, like the Dr. Seuss uh, adaptations that they've done in the past 10, 15 years, like the, the, the Grinch and, and the cat in the hat, where it just feels like they've sanded the corners off of everything. And it's, you know, it's so kind of stagey, like the production design even is so arch and kind of weird and fluffy. I, you know, I just I just want to bring I don't want to say it's a grittiness, but it's like a grittiness for six year olds that I think the original movie had. <laughs> just you know, that's 100 percent accurate. Wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses. <laughs> just hey, so man, edgy. the daughter's boyfriend. He seemed like a real he seemed like a real badass because that's exactly how they coded him. You know? Yep, that's true. OK, <laughs> Cool. So let's let's get into that a little bit. Maybe that's how we start talking about what is the story that we're telling. Like, first of all, before we even get into what scares us, are we just going with a straight up accidental shrinking or is there other nonsense going on in this movie? I don't, where do you guys even want to start? Let's just. OK, in. can I I can I throw my ideas out there now? Sure. Sweet. I can't wait for you guys to say no. I'm very excited. <laughs> so here's I my love, idea but before you do that ron i love how like we're trying to talk about let's talk about what scares us let's talk about what we're interested in and ron's just like guys here's the story <laughs> ron's pitches yeah. scare me even yeah, as a six-year-old true. that would get me so <laughs> um okay so uh th- okay so i've been watching all these cheesy uh uh pixar shows where they kind of touch on family subjects that really make you feel right so I was thinking, first off, I think it would be great if it was a, a, a female lead uh, who uh, they're going. She's the scientist. Uh, the, the husband is whatever he is. Um, and I was thinking they basically be going. This is just an idea I threw out there just because I remember I, I don't know about you guys. I went through a divorce as a kid and that stuff is pretty weird and tough. Um, hmm. And so I thought it'd be interesting if uh, if part of the divorce is this lady's so uh, into her work and she's the, the relationship sort of like waning or whatever. And there's in the middle of a divorce and then she shrinks the kids and shrinking the kids is an impetus for um, 
the family getting back together because they have to find the kids. They found out they shrunk the kids, all of that. Just because uh, I would love something cheesy like that. It doesn't have to be even, you know, like a, a specific divorce or anything like that. But I, I would love there to be some kind of family driven thing in there so that the shrinking uh, in the end is the thing that brought everybody together. It looks like a disaster and you get your your scary things happening from a praying mantis or or whatever. You also get an Ant-Man joke in there just because that would be necessary. Uh, but, you know, uh, I just think it would be real fun to have a, a, a situation where you're bringing a family together while having these shenanigans of shrinking the kids. Let That's me yes idea. and you, Ron. Yeah. Um, so I think, yes, I think family is always kind of a key to these kind of stories. And I think you might have a stronger POV, especially if I'm a kid watching this, if it's from the point of view of the kid, not the, the parents Ooh, putting it together, yeah. because I think that's definitely, you know, when you think about the original and maybe why it clicks so much is, like I said, you know, I'm not trying to harp on it too much, but it's like they set up in the first 15 minutes of that movie. It's like the parents don't either care about the kids or they don't understand their kids or they don't know how to communicate with them. And so the obvious fear of like my parents parents don't see me they don't hear me becomes very literal so then it's like okay if we don't want to do that exact story from the kids point of view maybe it's you know finding another another theme that ties into that maybe it's I am afraid to grow up. So what's the literal opposite? You get really small. I think that's so for me, like maybe that's not, you know, where we end up. But I think just to start and based off what you said that maybe could help is I think these, this movie, A, yes, is about family and B, I feel like it's always going to be stronger if it's told from the kids POV instead of like the adults, because I don't think it's the adults that we're really trying to talk to. That makes sense. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, that said, I like the idea of maybe it is a family going through a divorce. I mean, I think that same. I think that that idea of like put the family in a real sort of personal pressure cooker, irrespective of the fi the sci fi stuff, um, is a good formula for this. That said, Billy, I would agree with you. I think it's a matter of nailing down. Like, totally get it if the parents are, are going through a divorce. I would also say, um, if the parents are going through a divorce, they shouldn't get back together in the end. But the Ooh. family should walk away sort of more comfortable with the new status quo, which I think is a little bit more realistic. Um, but I think it's a matter of figuring out what are the what are the problems that these kids are trying to solve for themselves and amongst themselves, like for them personally and then within their relationships in the family. Um, Mm, I just I don't know, man. I'm just I, I think I'm too edgy because I literally had a scene pop into my head fully formed of the kids at some kind of I don't know. They're really small at a rave and they inhale the tiniest amount of ecstasy <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they get so high. So I obviously would not do that. What is this but movie made by Dare? <laughs> popped into my head, fully formed. A micro that would be some Dare stuff, right? Nancy Reagan, eat your heart out. One micro millimeter, micro whatever of a mi I mean, micro dose. You know what's kind of interesting? You could do the little bit toned down version of that, where it's like they encounter a drop of like whiskey or vodka because one of the parents <laughs> is like drinking and then they go swimming in like the drop of vodka and then all the kids are drunk you know what i mean like i think you could get away with that one <laughs> I, I don't think, I think you could, could. but I, I think i think we have the i think the solution also i think in the movie they did a good job of having correct me if i'm wrong and i probably am but like how many freaking kids were there? It seems like there was a sister who was old enough to kiss boys and have it not be weird. Mm -hmm. And then little kids, right? Mm -hmm. There was four. There was the, the older sister, the older brother, and then they both had younger brothers. Okay. Because so if, if we have little girl. Yeah, if we have little kids, like like there could be, a, 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 you know, they get really small and like there's a big drop of clear liquid and the dude runs over. He's just, uh, the, the teen boyfriend runs over. He's just like, yeah, man, let me get some of this. I'll test it for you. Oh God, that's not water, bro. <laughs> I, that, totally. I think, I think yeah. that's, 
I think that's valid. And then he keeps it, and the kids no, are like, oh, yeah, do not drink this. <laughs> yeah, and the, the, the little kids run over, and he's just like, no, no, no. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but also, I think, yeah, I think we just identify what kind of, I, I think uh, the the person that's the main character could be the, the could be female, but also like the, the like in the movie, I guess. Uh, wasn't the the girl more the main character? It was the girl and her boyfriend story, right? In the original, I mean, yes and no. I think that the the four kids actually kind of all it was a true ensemble in that fact. I don't think yeah. one kid outshone any other. It was very Goonies. I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah, that was the vibe between the between the kids because there was also yeah. that you know the older kids that didn't necessarily want to be around the younger kids, which actually is very Stranger Things too. It's like then they all had to come together because of this experience. Um, can we take a step back and just think about like what, how else, who could the kids be? Because what you were just saying, Billy, made me think. In that first one, it was it was the Zelensky kids and the neighbor kids. The right? Russells, so, yeah, yeah. So it was like the two best friends who were the little kids, but then the older, like the older brother or the older brother and the older sister didn't really get along. But then they ended up having a romance, and there was like some interfamily drama. So I'm just thinking, it's like, do you shrink down a whole after school basketball team, and you know, do you do you shrink down a whole school? You know, is that I, I think that you shrink good? down enemies. I think you shrink down like like just off the top of my head two debate groups, two after school teams who hate each other. Say, is it too cliche at this point to do? Maybe it is probably. But go with me. Something like a detention class or something, you know, like mm. two kids, oh. Actually, three kids. I have an interesting were, idea. Uh, bullies that are picking on the kids that, from the house that show up at the house. Uh, sort of in like almost pretending that they're not bullies so the parents don't really know but the kid the, these bullies show up to pick on the kids and then they all get shrunk down and they're what if it's kids adventure. who are like a bad like it's a bully group or something and one of the you know our person we're following is uh kind of like their new recruit or whatever is starting to hang Ooh. out with the bad group and it's like <laughs> pick on someone your own size type of thing they're always picking on little people <laughs> and then they get shrunk down and it's like I don't know. Again, like thinking in terms of a kid's film, sometimes you can be on that, you know, that on the nose. Oh, I will. Well, yeah. Also, also, I was thinking, uh, but this is, again, too dark. OK, I'm going to I'm going to keep pitching the two dark ideas okay. and you walk them back. OK, because I was thinking <laughs> if you were getting bullied and your dad was a scientist or your mother was a super scientist that you and you've seen wondrous stuff in her lab. She never let you go in there, but you've seen Dexter's lab. You see the ill stuff that's in there. So one day you go in there and you get like a little device. You're like, I don't know what this does, but if I flash it, it'll scare the bullies or whatever. And it shrinks all y'all or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, oh, that's almost like that's a gun drama. Great. I don't think that's too dark at all. <laughs> that's that fantastic. idea of like, I'm going to fight back against these bullies by stealing from my mom's lab. But like, it's, it's the, it's the classic, you know, genie in the bottle thing. Like be careful what you wish for, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 I yeah. think that that's, I think that's really good. I like the dynamic with the bullies. Yeah, I was going to say, I love that that also kind of does that thing of getting you with your enemy so it doesn't feel too forced. But mm. then by the end, you know, they discovered things about each other, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, it's you have to just be careful. I see where you're what you're talking about, Ed. So it doesn't feel like, uh, you know, Columbine thing, like taking a gun. Right. To <laughs> but, I, t- I, took but, a, but, I took a gun. It's, it's like it's like a breakfast club. It's like, what kind of gun you got? Shrink gun, dog. It was a shrink gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely got a, a tightrope walk, but I definitely love that idea of you, you know, using it as like a, a way to fight back, and then you end up being shrunk with your enemies. Let's talk about setting a little bit because the original movie had a very simple setup in that it all took place in their house and backyard, where they were shrunk in the attic, got stranded in the backyard, and then it was an epic journey to get from the backyard back into their house so they could tell their dad we got shrunk um are we i don't think we should do that same story so where could this take place that would be really interesting and fun to be shrunk i kind of like the idea of doing it at school i Mm -hmm. think uh there's a lot of like 
fears and pressures and everything that goes on at school. So it's kind of fun mm. to explore those in using very like literal ways of doing it, you know? Plus, plus some great visuals will come out of that. Walking on a pencil, uh, uh, you know. Uh, what if it happened to Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, huh. let me pitch this. What if it happened like a kid was having a birthday party and you knew as you know our kid knows that like the bullies are going to be there and so he shows up for the birthday party with like the shrinking device and then suddenly they're all shrunk in like a child's playground so it's like arcade games and ball pit and like the weird tubes and everything but now it's you know the equivalent of like a thousand feet tall there's something interesting to that I I love that. That's amazing. You have video games in there, ski ball. There's a bazillion. I was going to cool. say you could do you could pretty do a pretty uh, funny Raiders of the Lost Ark homage with ski ball. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> or yeah. you? Do, I mean, yes. Or you do it at like ooh, a state ooh, fair ooh. or something. But no, I no, I think I think this is good because imagine. And again, this is my thing. Again, but I I think we're establishing a good rhythm here. I'm gonna go too far, and then we're gonna reel it back, like catching a fish. So like, I think what if obviously we need to make them get smaller, but at some point, you know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe they they try to maybe the one of the I don't know how smart this kid is, but maybe he thinks he's smarter than he is. And tries to fix the device in the middle of the thing. Like, oh, I, okay, I guess. My, I, I never thought that that was real. Shrink ray technology? Again, maybe super cliche. But the bottom line is he tries to fix it and it makes them get super small. And if they're super small in the ball pit, all them d- germs. Them germs <laughs> are hella big. Oh, that's them cool. I love that. Big. That's great. <laughs> you know? That's that's that dark. Dark. Yeah, even if it's like a gag, you know, like they're like... Turns back, turns back, turns back. And they, they get a little bit bigger, but they're still small, you know? But I love, yeah, like fighting microbes, you know? <laughs> I, I also think that that's great because it does a thing where it takes a very real parent fear of like, oh, Jeremy ball pit, and then literalizes it in this really over the top way. Yeah, so I think that's, that's you, what you just said is key to what makes Honey, I Shrunk the Kids so great is taking those little fears you have and blowing them up times a thousand. Yeah. Have you seen pictures? Have you seen the pictures of like bacteria when they like zoom in on them? They actually are terrifying. No, oh, they're monsters. Yeah. <laughs> so we I can also, li- I like Ed too. what you're saying, this idea that like, Because the first movie was very much the shrinking happens and then it's just a straight up adventure. This idea of playing with the scale of the shrinking could be Uh really fun. I mean, Ant-Man gets a ton of mileage out of that and it's really fun. No, absolutely. And and like, I just think as long as we, like I said, we got, we got in it, we got enemies together, bullies and the bullied and uh, maybe a love interest for the kid that's being bullied or whatever, or maybe she uh, is the the boy the girlfriend of one of the bullies, you know, and just kind of like trailing him down the block as he comes to beat up our kid. Like, stop it, Jeffrey! You shouldn't beat him up. I'm gonna dump you if you do this. Shut up, Cheryl. I don't give a damn. I'm gonna beat him up. Yeah, whatever, you Cheryl. know. And they all get shrunk. <laughs> And then they all, they all get shrunk, you know, it's like, like, a, like in the middle of an argument, in the middle of a right. bullying, in the middle of a thing, they all get shrunk. And it's like, dude, what? That's <laughs> also such a real fear for parents to like lose your kids at one of those Chuck E. Cheese type places, oh, you know, yeah. like imagine yeah. police tape swarming around. And, oh, yeah, if, wow. this, if this was the real dark, if this was the real dark version that you want, Ed, there'd just be some creepy guy <laughs> sitting in the corner by himself in the Chuck E. Cheese and everybody would think he was the uh, guy who stole the kids. Now I'll be investigating him. You know? yeah. Do we have The Rock playing a cop in a five minute cameo, yeah. just slamming him <laughs> on a skee ball table? You, you tell me where the kids are. <laughs> well, see, I, I think that also could. I think that also works with this with the sort of parents going through a divorce setup because it's like, you know, there's something really interesting to this idea of like a group of kids show up for a birthday party as a giant Chuck E. Cheese and then like 10 kids all just disappear and they lock down the Chuck E. Cheese. And now all the other parents have to come too. and there's all this finger pointing and there's a lot of good, juicy, sort of funny adult drama that you could build Definitely. around that. I think you mm-hmm. could even do your Inspector Clouseau type police character, oh, some yeah. comic relief, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, He's questioning hey, You were the one the that like did not want to do this episode and you're the one that 
that keeps throwing out little nuggets of gold left and right. <laughs> I guess that's how it works. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's the um, what is the through line then for the story? So we, we've got a lot of great little elements and set pieces. And, and I love this idea of like it's a kid who's being bullied and, you know, is just kind of at the end of his rope and wants to. And again, I think that I, this is a tightrope walk, but I think that you can really address something interesting here of like, how do you deal with bullies and how do you deal with bullies when you feel like all of the conventional options have been played out, right? It's like you've told your teachers and your parents have had a talk with their parents and the bullying still happens. And then what do you do? And for this kid, he makes the wrong choice because he decides I'm going to steal my mom's experimental shrinking, whatever, um, and shrink us down. I think ultimately this story that we're kind of telling is like how, you know, the theme of this is like, how do you get along with someone that you don't get along with? Yep. And I think what he can learn with his bully kind of maybe kind of translates to how he can get a lot or, you know, have his parents get along enough to be civil or he can get along with maybe he's angry at one of the parents for leaving. I think it's just kind of about like, how do you find a peaceful solution to a bad situation? Mm. Oh, and if, if I could jump in right here, I think the the theme between the parents are it's, it's a combination of what you said and what Ron said, all y'all. The thing is, it's not about getting the parents back together as a romantic couple. It is about making them understand that each of them are necessary to work together to raise their kids right. Mm-hmm. Regardless, yeah. regardless of romantic, you know what I mean. Yep. So yeah. that's the real, uh, and I think that that's why the dad needs to have a function in finding them. We need to figure out some plot machinations to make the dad important, and like maybe he's a tracking expert. Again, I'm throwing it out there. He's, he's, <laughs> you know what I mean. He's the dude from Taken. I don't care, but he has to have some function to help find the kids because, and but and also have the mom have him. The parents need to work together to find these kids some kind of way. That's all I'm saying. I mean, here's an idea where, um, you know, uh, they're wa- they've gone through everything they can figure out to watch the kids. Uh, they see the video of the kid with the, the, the device. Because uh, just, let's just assume this Chuck E. Cheese has security cameras, right? Yeah, to ward off those creeps, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's just assume it. <laughs> there, there could be a sign at the beginning, video... F- Video 24 hours a day, whatever. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, um, uh, and so the dad, uh, you know, says they have to shrink themselves to find the kids. And then the, the parents get shrunk, shrink themselves down to go find the kids. And the dad is like helpful during that. I don't know. Okay. Is that ridiculous? Wait, what if, what if the solution is, this is kind of ridiculous, but I think it could be hilarious. The dad comes up with the solution of, well, why don't we shrink the whole building and then with all of us inside, then they'll just be normal sized. And then we just we because we have the technology, then we just enlarge everything again. You know what I mean? Like he's got this out of the box thinking where it's like, look, our kids are microscopic in here somewhere. Let's make everything microscopic. So we find them just normally. And then once we found them, we could just blow it all back up again. I don't know. There's that's kind of a w- weird solution, but I think it could be funny. Wouldn't yeah, they just get even smaller? And if you shrunk the whole building, you gotta hey, you gotta you, put some science in. You gotta put some Hollywood science into this, <laughs> where it's like they they already have the shrinking effect around them, so they can't be double shrank. I mean, obviously, you can't be double shrank. <laughs> Both <laughs> laws of shrinking. I actually love. You know what I love about this? This conversation could be had. <laughs> yes, within this. the film. No, this is in the movie. This yes. is yeah. in the movie. One hundred percent. Can you double shrink? Can, can you double shrink, dude? Well, okay, if you and if you can double shrink, you're gonna shrink them out of existence. Nothing's ever created or destroyed. What are you talking about? You know, like just real science. It's crazy. You get, you get like this could be your Rick Moranis cameo, by the way. It's like she, her mentor is this old weird scientist who comes in like um, like uh, Dick Van Dyke is the old bank owner in, Mar- in, in Mary Poppins. And he's just like, well, when you shrank, your information is preserved in the 
in the superstructure of the universe. And so what happens is just deliver some nonsense exposition. Uh, oh, but I was thinking of speaking of nonsense, though, the reason why the parents have to, quote unquote, shrink to go find the kids or whatever, or could be a reason why they might have to do that, is that the, the tracking device for finding the particles or whatever, maybe we stay away from particles since we're talking about pin particles, but finding the radiation that makes you shrink or whatever, the tracking device only works if it's on a similar scale. If it's if you're too small, the thing can't read your your reading. So we have to get small to use this piece of technology on the same scale. That's why we would have to get small and go find them. But they also have to bring some 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 kind of something to ride. This, this ain't Lord of the Rings. I watched these fools walk across four inches of parquet floor for for two hours. I'm not about to do that. No, yeah. I mean, look, there's especially like at a Chuck E. Cheese, you know how many like lost Hot Wheels and stuff are just <laughs> rolling around on the floor? And wind up they get in the claw machine. Yeah, they get in like, the claw yeah. machine and, oh, and yeah. pick a car out of there or something, a, a remote control <laughs> car, you know? Yeah, I, I do think, though, you're you're hitting on something like they need a MacGuffin to go after because the first right. one, their epic journey was like, we need to get back in the house because that's how we let mm. dad know that we're here. So it's almost like when they shrink, they get separated from whatever the device is. And now the device is like up at the top of the weird play gym or whatever. And so it's like, how the hell are we going to get up there? It's basically like 500 stories to our. Uh, okay, what about this? What if the shrinking ray gun, because we've been calling it, let's just say it's like handheld and maybe it doesn't look like a gun, but it looks like something. What if uh-huh. they shrink, they, they're down on the ground and the, the thing is right next to them. So it's, it's really huge to them. An employee walks by, thinks that it's a toy oh. and then puts it back in the claw. Love it. Boom. Love it. Yes. Yeah, that that, that oh, lost it, lost and found, and then they all that, that, check it out. He puts it in the lost and found, and then they go to the lost and found. And go, this isn't for the lost and found. You got to put it in the claw machine. Yes. So the kids yes. make it to the freaking lost and found, but then they grab it and take and it. And it's the all going the opposite oh, end. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and I just this just the picture of this like them looking at how far it is, and it looks like. <laughs> Dude, you know, like yeah. 17 miles or whatever. Like you're looking at a, a, a mountain range in like, that's, oh God, that's so great. Oh, oh. And, and just putting a hat on a hat, as we say, um, once, once it's in there, the parents kind finally realize that this thing has been stolen. So now they're looking for the, the thing all over the, all over the, um, uh, whatever, but basically it gets broken at the end of the second act, right? So yep. it's like they finally find it and the parents are like, oh my God, hit the reverse button or whatever. And then they drop it and it's broken. And so then they have to come up with like, oh my God, we have to go get the other one. Now I'm going to give this weird hard science mumbo jumbo because this is how my brain works. But I think it's a little ball and you twist it and it creates like a space time bubble. Right. And that warps you down. And so now you're like quantumly entangled with it. But if it breaks, the bond is broken. So now it's like, oh, my God, we have no way to to scale them back up. And it's like, well, we have to expand the effect and shrink the whole thing down and then shrink us all back. I don't know. There's something in there. That we'll can figure make it out work. the science. Yeah, I think at this point, mm. too, like. I don't know uh, how many how many countless hours of Star Trek have I watched that I just take for granted. Yeah, sure, <laughs> the quantum nuclear thingamajig is broken. Sure, why not? You know. Yeah, awesome. Um, I think the last thing to talk about before we move into casting is is relationship wise. Who are we thinking? I we definitely have a bully, a bullied kid. We probably have the bullied kid's best friend. We have a love interest, uh, maybe her best friend. Maybe it's a bully, his co-bully, two girls, and then our main character and, and his best friend, his or her best friend. Maybe it's six kids. I, does that feel right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty just, balanced. Yeah, maybe five or six. I, I don't think you want to go any more than that because then yeah. you just start to have excess characters. But right. I think five or six is right. Yeah. Do we, do we want to have a variance in ages or do we like the idea that they're all kind of in the same grade? I kind of like that they're all in the same grade. I kind of feel like that maybe helps sell the theme a little better. It's like kind of working within your peers and, and relationship problem solving. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, and you know what? I think last thing this came into my mind earlier, the, 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 the main character and the bullies start to come to an understanding because we find out that the bullies parents are also divorced and that kind of I accounts for like his, mm. his anger. And yeah, then, of course you have to. Yeah. And so then it's like, they start to see eye to eye. And when his parents show up to the Chuck E. Cheese, we get an idea of like what his home life is like. And, but anyway, by the time that they're blown back up, our, our kids, parents have figured out how to work together. And then the kids have been like, look, man, if you want to come and hang out at my house, you're always welcome sort of a thing. Right. right. Oh, and one, one, one thing I'd like to interject, though, I, I want to push back a tiny bit on all of them being old, because frankly, cool old kids don't kick it at Chuck E. Cheese. So I figure we got to have one kid there to motivate one young kid who may, maybe can be precocious, maybe can be cooler I, than a dumb I think little they're kid. All young, but a- yeah. But but like 13? What, th- th- what no. 12? Oh, no. I was 10? thinking like, like seven, seven oh. or eight. I, well, I was like thinking seven. about middle school just because I, you, I don't know if you guys went through this. <laughs> you remember your growth spurt? Um, I, I got mine earlier than everybody else, so I was tall for a year. I just love the idea that you're in the middle of that age group where you're not quite growing. So when you could be a bully is when even though you're the same age as somebody, you just ended up being bigger. For whatever reason, uh, I don't know. Right. Is that ridiculous? No, I, or? and and mm-hmm. Ed to your point, no, that's, that's I, we've been that we've been saying Chuck E. Cheese is a point of reference. There's no way they'll let us do a movie where there's pedophiles and missing children. So I definitely <laughs> think more of like a Dave and Buster's, which is a yeah, little we'll bit see, more that, that's temporary. Mm. And we'd make it up. I'm sure we'd have to make up yeah. the franchise. It wouldn't be a real place. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know not Chuck E. Cheese, but I'm just saying to, to preserve my magnificent ball pit gag, <laughs> you know, not ball gag pit. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> that's a whole different movie. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's that's all I'm saying. Like maybe they'll have like a, a, like a gimmick ball pit for like grown ups or something like that. Fine, whatever. You or know, even if there's tween, like a kids, a tweens. little kids section of this big Dave and Buster's right, or something. Right. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. That, that's all. That's all. That's all fine. I'm just, oh, I was going to say, well, I mean, if the, if the kids themselves are called kind of all the age range, did you guys see that movie Good Boys? Just yeah. about dude. Yeah, yes. sixth graders. Yeah. I love Good Boys too much. Like yeah. I, I'm that black kid through and through. <laughs> I'm that black kid through and through. Clee was nudging me during that movie. Talk about that's you. That's you. <laughs> I had to jump on you the first time we had sex. Like, Shut up. Shut up. (laughs) But I think that that's the age range. And then maybe it's like, maybe there's like a pimply faced kid who works at the Chuck E. Cheese or whatever this franchise is, right? It's sort of like somewhere between Chuck E. Cheese and Dave and Buster's. Dude, 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 because he knows the layout. When they get little, he's the one who knows the layout. Yes. And, yeah. And yeah. he like, he like catches the kids about to, about to like throw down or whatever. And he uh-huh. tries to stop them. But like the younger bully kid like pushes him down. So it's like, he has to, <laughs> he has yes. to sort of become a little bit more confident. I don't know. Just yeah. something. Uh, you can do I mean, that for the age range. Yeah. Middle school, like 11 is good. Like yeah, 10, I, 11, that's good. You're right. I do that's like the idea age. of some uh, younger brother hanger on who's like the super comedy relief, you know, like the uh, Cherry Maguire kid kind of uh, kind of funny. Like well, but one, the, yeah, that's that what they've got to like keep to. dragging yeah. with them. They can't quite keep up, but it's always saying goofy, <laughs> funny things. And I don't know. Like and this. much like Ron, he might save the day with his little kid idea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, he, th- he thinks he thinks something interesting <laughs> outside of the box that everybody else is too quote unquote uh, adult to think of, and he goes, "Boom! This is what you do." And they're like, "Oh, f- oh, kid, thanks." You know what I mean? I can see that. That's <laughs> that's good. I, I think that's, that's great. great. Yeah, thanks. So, little kid ideas? Do I have to take? <laughs> <laughs> so, do I have to say something about that? I think I feel like I feel like I have to say. Oh, thanks. No, no, that's cool. I was going to say simple, but that sounded demeaning too. Oh, so no, it's like no, no, it's no, a that ball. Was that was much better to call me a child. I was great. So I guess we don't really call this "Honey, I Shrunk the Kids" anymore, right? Because it's not like a, a husband telling his wife. Do you just call it "shrunk" and just? Hope for the best. That, that, that's what the new reboot is called. Shrunk. <laughs> we're, 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 we're think, dude, we're thinking just like the big boys. Well, my baby grows I guess up, it's, my baby I guess grows it's up. way creepier if you were just called, honey, I shrunk kids. 
<laughs> Should we just call it shrinkage and just see what happens? <laughs> Honestly, I think that that word, though, shrunk, is sort of so... You just don't see it a lot of places. It's so associated with this franchise. I think you yeah. could totally get away with that. Is it proper gray? I thought I always thought it was shrank. I shrank the kids. I don't. I sh- oh. Shrunk a but word? Sh- sh- shrunk sounds... Uh, I, Ron probably knows because he's, he's a real stand-up comedian. Uh, there's something about hard K sounds that's funny. And there's something about that U sound rather than the ank. For, uh, there's something about unk that sounds funnier than ank. I don't know. No, I, th- I think if you just called it shrunk, I think you're right. People would just somehow know that it was part of this world, you know? Yeah. Oh, no. But yeah. like I said, the, the, the reboot that they're doing is literally called that. Oh, <laughs> so it is? It's, 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 a, it's a great idea because that's what oh. they're doing. Uh, so, so, but like I said, this, it's a parallel, parallel thinking. We're in a bunker. What do we know? This reboot is so bunker. off my radar. Like I, was, I, I remember reading about it in the trades a while back, but yeah, I, I, to be honest, when we started I the saw, show, I forgot that they were rebooting this. I saw <laughs> a, a, a supposedly leaked synopsis and it is crazy pants. If really? that is what it is, you are in for a jaw dropping uh, reboot on that one. Like what? Like Wayne Zelensky is holed up because he couldn't save his wife's cancer. He couldn't shrink the cancer cells. And oh so he's God. been like a, a recluse. It's way more bonkers than anything oh, we could come boy. up with. Wow. <laughs> that feels a oh, little oh, like, I, now I don't feel as bad about our oh. dark thoughts. Look, just look, if it's real, it is way darker than anything we would ever come up with here. Yeah, that feels a little like, <laughs> ew, like, uh, uh. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Speaking of <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the kids. Boys, that's the new theme song. I've been working on it. I've got Benny Blanco at my house with me. We've been working on the new theme song. I tell him, Benny, I want it to just sound like this. Honey, I shrunk the kids. That's what we need. That's a banger, as the kids say. They tell Be- Benny, is that right? It's a banger. Yeah, whatever, John. Yeah, he says that's right. That's right. So, guys, I need you to come up with a movie that's as much of a banger as this hot track that we're lying down. Oh, God, where's this going? (laughs) And so, what that means to me is that this movie needs to have teenage sex. That is what this movie needs. No! Don't you tell me no. Whose signature is on your checks? (laughs) <laughs> Give me a break here. No. I want a lot of will they, won't they? There's some flirty teenage action happening here. And you know, it, they're teenagers, so we're gonna blur it out. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the direction you need to take this movie. Because I'm telling you what, I got a top 40 hit maker in here. And he's giving me hot, hot tracks. Bring me something that's gonna titillate. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, Leave it to John. So the Peters. pedophile has to be involved now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, I think the simple solution to that is we definitely lean into the pimply faced kid who works at the Chuck E. Cheese, and we just need to find a way to shrink like the hot chick from his high school down. Like she's the older sister to one of the other kids yeah, at the birthday party. Yeah, it's gotta party. be like one of the bully's older sister or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, oh, guys, oh. stop you know, it. Yeah, and you know what makes that super dope? Because this guy knows what it feels like to be bullied. And he could kind of coach a little kid, but then the kid is like, so when did you stop getting bullied? He's like, oh, no, no, I still get bullied right now. <laughs> like, I never I never defeated that, you know. And over the course of the of adventure, he does. He proves himself to his bully or, to, or maybe, maybe his work bully. I don't know. She, Maybe he okay. can do like a re- he can have like a real swashbuckling like kind of moment yeah. where he like kisses the girl and then does some sort of like Luke Skywalker you know <laughs> holding on to something. What if know. the what if the teenage girl is the teenage guy's bully, and then that ends up turning into romance over the course of you know what I mean? Like oh. if she's the one who kind of like picks on him and makes him feel crazy about himself. And then, oh, well, yeah, so we're just starting that relationship bully. with uh, dysfunction and damage. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's a different type of bullying, because I think that's one thing that people don't. And I'm not trying to get on a soapbox, but I've heard from like younger kids that I've talked to and stuff 
nowadays, of course, it's never been okay to beat up anybody and certainly not girls. But due to the fact that that's not the case, there's some cutting remarks. Oh, <laughs> social <laughs> media <laughs> bullying. I mean, that's the thing yeah, that like, yeah. yeah, that's the hot topic. Yeah, maybe she's been like tweeting mean stuff about him or like tweets a picture of him and it's like, what a what a loser, whatever, whatever kids yeah, say. Right, right. Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Right, and see, and it's exactly. So like the older, the, the, the kid that. Yeah, 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 yeah. TikToks. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> TikTok bullying. That's hilarious. <laughs> By the way, TikTok bully is a great name for a Disney movie. Oh, I actually, she does a dance that's terrible. She does like a stupid dance, like that. And they're like, that's how that kid dances. No, you know what it is? She took she took a video of him like falling in class yeah. and remixed it into like a hot beat or something, which is where we yeah. can bring in that John Peters, Benny Blanco collaboration. Oh, there yeah. it is. <laughs> TikTok it. shrunk colon TikTok Bowie. I love it. Honey, I shrunk. That. Honey, I shrunk that. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, so based, and we're touching on the two different types of bullies, right? So there's the person who bullies you on social media when you're older and you can't just duke it out as little kids and not really get in trouble. And then there's the little kids who will straight up punch you in your mouth. So you got to deal with them too. So it's like, it's the levels of bully. There's levels to this. And I guess we have some weird scene where they sneak off behind a ball to make out or something. I mean, I think I think it's we got to keep this PG, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, this is the thing, I, you know, to, no matter what John Peters says, I don't think the studio lets us get away with this being anything more than PG-13, um, which means there's definitely no nudity and the sex is implied. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah, maybe it's just that he's staring intently at a couple making out a whole bunch, which is why he's not looking at his section, which is why when he finally looks up to his section, there's a bunch of little kids about to fight each other. And he's like, oh, damn. he has a run over there and then he gets shrunk and it's all, you oh, know, yeah. yeah, there you go, Peters. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, mean, so, I say that with you guys. Don't don't tell him I said that. So I just like I just want one scene where he's confident afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> Well, no, absolutely. Well, the epilogue will be, yeah. Yeah. And no, and I think I think that's where you could get it, too, is like in the epilogue, they're like holding hands, giggling and like sneaking out back to make out. And, you know, again, yeah. the implication. We won't show the handy. We just know yeah. the handy <laughs> happened. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> absolutely. Some over the pants absolutely. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> over the pants and true to woods. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so as we cast this, there's a lot of roles. I don't know that we're going to be able to fill all of them because we probably don't know enough about 10-year-old actors. Um, but Zero. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one. But I do think that there's roles for the mom and dad, the scientist mom and her kind of weird outside-the-box thinking dad. I think there's roles for the dysfunctional mom and dad of the bully. I think there's role a role for that Inspector Clouseau type that Ed was talking about. And then if right, can, I got I got I got two pitches for people, either the dad or the Clouseau type, Michael Pena, e either role, <laughs> him being able to either I'm a, him playing a detective is hilarious as hell to me, but him being the dad who has to like explain, wait a minute, wait a minute. So hold on, hold on. You got a strict break? You got a strict break? And he's like going through the whole thing and busting it down and stuff. It's like, ah. I, think, I, think, I just think that's funny. I think if you bring him in as the detective, it's kind of a fun riff on his Ant-Man character because it almost becomes a cami because he's not he doesn't show up until act two in this movie. Right. And right, so when yeah, he yeah. shows up, it's like, oh, I see what you did. <laughs> well, I just I just like him as an actor. Like I said, that's why I also, also uh, I think he should strongly try to um, um, audition, at least for the dad role, because I think he's got more range than we know. Mm. And I think it's 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 I think he's a star that's getting beyond being used for his nuclear comedic ability i've seen movies like observe and report that have him all up and through it that are kind of good you know what i mean mm -hmm. he's got range he's, he's got range and he's, he's good i like him mm -hmm. um i have a very important casting role that i have missed in the last one it's very important you guys um, there's no place for him none yeah who are you talking about I, literally I anybody you're thinking of <laughs> I know who you're talking about. Actually, uh, the bully's dad is Jensen Ackles. Uh, no, it's not. <sighs> no, it is. <laughs> Here's the thing. I Actually, think I have a better one. It's Oscar Isaac. No, no, no. no. 
Oscar We're Isaac. We're not going to waste Oscar, Oscar Isaac, Isaac. Is not coming anywhere near this movie. That sounds terrible. <laughs> just because Oscar Isaac should be doing much bigger and better stuff than this. Hey, <laughs> yeah. don't you talk who, who, about this movie that I specifically wrote? Who, who, are, are, you, are you his anti agent? Are, are you hired to lower his star profile? Just like, what you need to do is get in a family kid fair. Just be a second banana in a kid's movie. That's what you need to do. Look, you guys, I had to give the fans something, and they wanted uh, me to cast Jensen Ackles, all right? And I just. First of all, if you want to go that route, You do Jared Padalecki, he grows his hair out long, he grows a handlebar mustache, and he's the white trash dad of the bully. Oh my god. That's actually genius. I could see it. (laughs) Yes. I love it. like, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. (laughs) Sold. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Maybe for the mom, maybe someone like a... Oh God, I can't even remember her name anymore. Who played Electra? Jennifer Garner. Jennifer Garner, is that correct? Jennifer Garner. She is like the classic movie mom too. I mean, she yeah. is the movie mom. Or Carrie Russell, maybe. I mean, that would be that would actually be a nice little wink and nod that she was in uh, "Honey, I Blew Up the Kid." Oh, was she the girlfriend oh, right. in that movie? She was the girlfriend of yeah. Nick in "Honey, I Blew Up the Kid." That was her first movie. Can I just say? It might be good to uh, make your main characters non-white in this. I don't, there's just Michael like, Pena as the as the dad. You're so right. Can shoot some shoot some seed. Get some little kids that are brown. Throw them in them David Busters. <laughs> <laughs> is it is Tiffany Haddish too? I mean, as the as the scientist, <laughs> finish that yeah. sentence, Ron. Is that too weird? <laughs> <laughs> is she too like adult funny? She she she's gonna be uh, the detective. <laughs> Actually, that's detective. Kind of a, I love that idea. That's kind that of the like, detective. That's good kid kid movie casting there. Yeah, because she's just like, man, I'm trying to find these kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think that that would be hilarious. Tiffany Haddish is the detective I love. Like, yeah, like, like I said, I would like to audition like a comedian and then like a serious actress who maybe wants to do something for her kids, uh, a Carrie Washington type. Uh, maybe somebody slightly younger than her, you know, get, get, get some of these ladies that are like, they can do comedy, but they don't necessarily get to do it. Who's the, who's the new, um, you know, actresses like that? Uh, Hmm. Well, what I was who, are the, who are the new middling, you know, they do lots of dramas and they're funny too. type actresses. Who are those? If you want, if you want two parents that will definitely produce some ethnically ambiguous kids so we could re- literally cast out of any race, you do mm. Michael Pena, and then the scientist wife is Ali Wong, who we've brought up before, <laughs> but she could play that role in a in her sleep. I think. I was also thinking the the main girl from Knives Out, um, Ana de Armas. Oh, Ana de Armas. Ooh. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Well, she's hot, tall or small. She's <laughs> really. <laughs> I, we got to get some dads in the theater. I, I'm voting for the Armas. <laughs> it's actually not a bad point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Michael Pena and Ana de Armas. Michael Pena is batting way out of his league in that uh, situation. Don't most hey. of those. That's like the classic Fred and Wilma Flintstone scenario, though. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, and, and that's why that's that's why they broke up. <laughs> yeah, that's why she's getting divorced. She's like, what is happening here? I'm smarter. I am better looking. <laughs> but that's the thing. She's too serious and she's too structured. And he's a little bit goofier and more laid back. And it's his out of the box thinking that saves the day at the end. Yeah, it's one of Mrs. Doubtfire stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as like the teenage, like the dorky kid and the and the female bully. Is there anybody that jumps out from any anything you've seen recently as like, oh, I would love to use that person? Uh, I mean, the, uh, the the obvious answer, which probably is not right, but like Finn Wolfhard is like the nerdy kind mm-hmm. of worker kid. He could probably pull it off. Sure. I'll be I'll be glad when he gets old enough to, to not get past be in this the, stuff. Yeah. It's, oh, my God. <laughs> um. 
Yeah, I think I honestly, guys, I think this is a case where we uh we, we throw it up to Disney's finest. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, who's your, new, who's your new Miley Cyrus you're trying to pump through the system? Let's give exactly. them a vehicle. Get give us your your 2021 Zendaya model and <laughs> let's roll. You know what I mean? Like you know, give give us some of these, you know, whatever. <laughs> Does it come in black? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you guys at home are watching this and you have some amazing ideas for who could fill out this kid cast, sound off in the comments because we read them and we would love to respond, especially if to tell you you're wrong, we would love to do that. <laughs> so give us that opportunity. Be nice to us. Give us that opportunity to shit on your ideas. It <laughs> Dude, and, and, but also I, I must admit, if you guys out there have watched that movie Good Boys, I never heard of any of those kids in that movie from the villain in the movie who's like a four foot tall, smart Asian kid who's like the super villain of the movie and the person who controls every click. And then the all the other kids, I never heard of any of them. And they were great because let's admit it. Kids aren't actors. They're like dogs. You yeah. just you just put the jingle the keys, do something. They get the emotions. Do it. You I mean, you're, you're 100 percent right. The four main leads of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids put a gun to your head. You couldn't tell me a single one of them. They didn't go on to have like these prolific careers. I think the kid that played the blonde younger brother was in like big a couple of years before it. Mm -hmm. And that was about it. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's a real skill to casting child actors. I mean, there are there are casting directors who specialize in it and there are directors um, who can do it and directors who can't, frankly, which brings us to the final question. Who directs this movie? Who can work with these kids? Who can bring the visual panache? Who has the dexterity with special effects? Who can bring the comedy? John Favreau, for me, is my main choice. It's an obvious. I mean, John Favreau and Taika Waititi are two incredibly obvious choices so let's get okay that out okay of let me throw a, 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 a maybe it's not obvious who the hell directed jumanji hmm that wasn't columbus was it well the original jumanji might have been chris columbus the but new the new ones are jake kasdan dude oh. jake i think we need to back the money truck up to a kid who already comes from generational screenwriting wealth <laughs> and, <laughs> and let him do this. I, 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 that would be my pitch just because Jumanji is one thing that came up over and over and over in this. Uh, Clee, I told her about my reticence to do Honey to Truck, to truck the Kids. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. She was like, what if they get trucked down to a video game like Jumanji? And then I was just like, babe, that's a horrible idea because if you turn a video game machine on, they'll get burnt up. But <laughs> Jay Kasdan's a great director. So I'm glad I remembered that. I think Jay Kasdan would be a good director for this. He's shown an affinity for kids. Uh, he's shown an affinity for directing kids. And he, he uh, and magical thinking. The magical thinking of Jumanji, mm. you never doubt why things are happening. It has its own real reality. I think he'd do a great job. Cool. I, I, I say we have Jay Kasdan and John Favreau battle it out. I don't think John Favreau <laughs> would agree to that. I think John Favreau's like, if you don't like my take, you can go f yourself. That's probably true. <laughs> I'll this be over here in my Star Wars corner and <laughs> yeah. please knock, counting Next all time. of my money. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, once again, we have achieved reboot. We have got a, a whole new take on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. We're calling it Shrunk, even though that weird, dark Zelensky continuation is also using that title, apparently. <laughs> Ours is an intergenerational bullying story, looking at all the different facets of how kids deal with bullying and how shrinking can really exacerbate that problem. We are stranding them in the middle of a Chuck E. Cheese meets Dave and Buster's kind of wonderland and tasking them to follow the MacGuffin as the pimply-faced kids who work there, pass it from the floor to the lost and found to the ball machine. I think it's going to be awesome. We've got Jake Kasdan directing. We've got a bunch of fresh face youngsters that some casting director better than us brings into this movie. Boom. We are ready to go. If you guys at home like what we're doing here, we're going to keep doing it. We are deep into season two. There's a brand new episode coming next week. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell. Make sure you comment. We really do love hearing your comments. Uh, we love interacting with you guys. We want to make future iterations of this show even more interactive. There just may be a live stream on the way. You've watched this space. 
And that reminds me too, if you're not reading the show notes down underneath the video, read the show notes because uh, you might just see an announcement coming up there soon. But for now, if you want more of us, Billy Business runs Hot Takes with Billy Business, a podcast very much worth your time. And then the Nerd Goat podcast produced by yours truly and co-hosted by Ed Greer and Ron Swallow. These show up in any podcast feed you might be using every single week. And until next week, stay safe. Don't shrink yourselves. Goodbye. Goodbye.